The show Mentalist on, on TV. How many of you have ever seen the show The Mentalist on TV? The Mentalist? I guess it's, off, it's, it's only on syndication. Fabulous show. The person just kind of interprets what's going on and so forth. And that's what John does. The show The Mentalist is kind of built off of John Stetson. So let's see. I'm, the money's all spent, but yes it was. The, money, the money's all spent. So I'm going to look at this. My glasses aren't on, so I'll do this. So. Again, if, if John looks familiar, maybe from one of his uh, national television appearances, he has performed all over the world in 23 countries and has performed at the White House and in, on five occasions. Please welcome and give a great Needham welcome to John Stetson. Good, you're speaking with me this evening. I like that. For those, uh, how many of you have been to see me here before? Have you, have you, oh, good. We got about, uh, yeah, about the forty percent maybe are comebackers, and the rest of you are uh, newbies. I love it. I love to come home to Massachusetts. I still travel. I still do over uh, two hundred and fifty live appearances a year. But it's always great to come home and. Uh, this event has always been very special, and when Arnie calls, I say, yeah, I'm going to meet him on New Year's Eve. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I, I'm absolutely serious. I, got, I did receive um, a call uh, this year to be uh, part of the, uh, you know, these things on television, the New Year's Rockin' Eve thing, uh, in conjunction with the theater show I'm doing in New York, but I said, sorry. No can do. <laughs> I'm going to need it. I love it. I'm actually a third generation doing this kind of work. And one of the first things I learned as a very young boy is how easy it is, how easy it is to influence the human mind with little more than simple words or simple actions. As a matter of fact, I've already started. So sitting where you are right now, do me a kind favor, raise your right hand and put it up in the air for me just like this. Right hand up, right hand up, right hand up, good. Form a fist, nice. Extend your index finger. Index finger, sir. I'm feeling the love over there already, good. Make a big old circle for me just like this and please listen carefully as you take that circle. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, all the way around just like this. And touch your chin. That's your cheek. <laughs> yeah, it said touch your chin. Now, I've been doing that exercise for well over 35 years, and I'll tell you why I do. I'd like to see how many of you kind of go with it. Tonight, I look around the room, I saw about, ooh, 78%, which is really good for me. Second of all, love watching the guys. The guys are slick. You guys got moves like this one. <laughs> and it's true, I was talking about the traveling I do, and the uh, best things that happen are the true things that happen in my performance. I was in Salt Lake City, Utah a few years back, there was a gal sitting up front, pretty red trip where you are, sir, and she's sitting like this. I go, that's your cheek. She goes, oh. <laughs> Outstanding moment. But speaking of family traditions, I do like to, I never know exactly what I'm going to do when I come onto the stage. A lot of that has to do with you, and it has to do with the way I feel. And tonight, I feel great. I'm in an exceptional mood, and I want to play. I want to play some games of what we call mind-to-mind -mind contact. You interested? Yes. How about the rest of you? Yeah. Otherwise, I have no idea why you're here. <laughs> but you know, one of the uh, traditions in my family, I started with my grandfather, my dad did this, and I do it to this very day. Before we come on stage at any given evening, we'll take a deck of playing cards. Now this is not mentalism, this is certainly not magic, it's certainly not mind reading. This is just a demonstration of basic human psychology. Because what we do is this, my grandfather did, my dad did, I do today. 
I take the pack of cards, open them up, remove the deck, take one card out. I remove one card from the deck and turn it. So it faces away from all the others. One card turns away from all the rest. Uh, sir, what is your first name? Charles. That's correct. <laughs> it's a gift, it truly is. Now, Charles, um, we've not met before, no. You seem so pleased. <laughs> but a uh, simple question. As you well know, there are uh, 52 cards in a deck. 26 are red, 26 are black. Given the choice, which would you prefer? Every night. Every single night I pose that question to a man in the front row and he says, red. Because the card we turn upside down is the same card every night. Every night it's the same card. Every night that first guy says red. Hello, sir. What's your name? Hello, sir. How are you tonight? I'm fine. Uh, Alan, there are hearts and there are diamonds. Your preference? Every night. Every single night, same card. Every single night, first guy says red, second guy says diamonds. What, what is your name, sir? Hi, Gary, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I haven't a care in the world. I think you know where we're going, sir. 13 cards in a suit, ace through king. Which would you choose? Really? <laughs> Every night. Every single night, my friends, it turns out the same way. We go through the cards, one card, the same card, every night. The King of Diamonds. Now, no, 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 that's psychology. There's no need to applaud psychology, my friends. However, I do know what you're thinking, sir. Yes, I do. You're thinking, bullshit. <laughs> you were thinking there's absolutely no way. My grandfather did this for close to 50 years. My dad did it for 20 years. I've been doing this for 40 years that the King of Diamonds would be the card every night. Now, given the fact that the gentleman said red, would you have gone to hearts or diamonds? You see, you're a man among men. You march to the beat of a different drummer, sir, and I will like it. Nothing gets by you. <laughs> Heart! And you probably wouldn't have said the King, would you? What would you have said? <laughs> Every night. Every night there's a guy sitting in that seat. Every night he thinks bullshit. Every night I have to show him that I know he's going to be here. So we use that vibe of parts. Now, Please, children, I don't normally need to use that language. It just happened to be what the man was thinking. <laughs> I get lots of interesting questions like, hey, if you're so good at this intuitive stuff, why don't you go to Las Vegas with a lot of money? <laughs> I do. <laughs> But in order to play games of chance, my friends, you need players. And I know when I see one. Oh, yeah. You know who you are, sir. You're sitting right there, aren't you? Yeah, it's you. You have player written all over you, my friend. And I'm going to make a prediction. I predict this man will get an incredible round of applause as he comes into my office.
What is your name, sir? Rob, I'm John. Come on up. Nice to see you. I, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that when I first was talking to you and you knew that eventually you would be coming onto the stage, I saw you kind of roll your eyes around. And, uh, if it makes you feel any better, sir, this is not exactly a dream come true for me either. <laughs> so, even playing field, even playing field, we're good, but you've got it going on, sir, and I love it. Uh, when you go to casino, I, I shouldn't assume things, but you do look like a player, as I said. Uh, would you prefer cards or dice? Okay, we'll play dice. I need a little advantage with a man like you. Sir, roll that around in your hand. In a moment, I'd love for you to think of one of those six numbers. After you do, uh, I'll be turning away. I'm going to ask you to please hold your hand out as if you're waiting for a gratuity, and then I'll show you. You can just orient. You can just put your hand out, please. You can just orient the die or dice. Either or either is the correct terminology. So it stares up at the ceiling as if there were a television camera taking a picture. I assure you, there's not. But just in case, you can cover with your other hand. Fair enough. Okay. So go ahead, sir. Adjust your number. Did you, are you thinking of a number, sir? Yeah. Did you adjust it on the die? <laughs> so you're now looking at the number you're thinking of. Yes, and now you're covering it. Do any of you remember our show, The Mentalist? Yeah, three of you. That's why we were canceled. Um, I'm going to use a few of the techniques tonight. But I must say this first. Anytime I do this with a man of class, style, breathing, a highly intelligent individual, a dynamic man, a human magneto, as it were, kind of like that Dos Equis guy, you know, the most interesting man in the world. Anytime I play the game with a man like that, he automatically goes to the number four. Which is what I think just happened. So. That was just a fact. Look at him, that's who he is. <laughs> Sir, take two steps back down in that direction, if you will, and uh, get another number to prove it just wasn't a fluke. And now I'll go to work. Please look over here. One, two, three, four. Five, six. That's a five. <laughs> now, uh, just one more. Actually, that was good. Uh, yeah, if you want to go. You know. Normally, you know, as, as you choose another number, so I'll explain something to them. You know, normally I, I always say, you know, you don't have to applaud because ever since America's got talent has come out of the scene, applause has been totally devalued in America. It means absolutely nothing. I like what you do, a room full of highly intelligent people who stare at me like this. <laughs> that is engagement, and that's why I'd love to come back to meet him. Sir, so I'm going to ask you to change your mind and do another number. Are you done, sir? Fantastic. Oftentimes in the show, we do a little psychological profiling in order to get to the answer to our mysteries, our questions. The mystery at the moment is his number. So, uh, dog or cat? Which would you prefer? Dog. Mm. Pen or pencil? Mm. Steak or sushi? Mm. Uh, Beetles or stones? Uh, Playboy Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Never mind what I think.
think. I know what you think. Um, <laughs> Uh, boxers or briefs? Boxers, okay, I'll do the math. I pay very close attention to everything, everywhere I go. If you do not believe in a natural sixth sense, hopefully you all believe in the other five. And when those five senses are working in concert, it really creates a sixth sense. Because in a moment, um, we're going to test each and every one. So let's do this, sir, with one more number. This will be fun. Good. Uh, who are you here with tonight? Your wife, what's her name? Hi, Katie. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Do you ever occasionally, sir, how should I put it, stretch the truth? Stretch the truth a little bit, whatever. Yeah, okay. So when you tell these lies, <laughs> do you think that people can tell just by looking at you? Well, we don't have to answer that. Because this is what we'll do. I'll count the numbers one through six. Each number I count, I want you to please respond by saying the word no. So you'll be telling the truth five times, one time, not so much. Fair enough? Okay. Now I want each of you to watch him closely. Because I'm going to ask what you think in just a moment. I don't want to make you nervous, sir. I will not be watching you. I'll be watching Katie. <laughs> Because I honestly believe she has a little more experience with you and the truth than I do. <laughs> so let's play the game. Are y'all ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. You ready, sir? Good. One. Okay, the response would be no. I'll count the numbers and you say no to each one. I know we started off a little slow. We were going pretty well there. And kind of derailed, but that's okay. One, two. There's not a person in this room who doesn't know that it's the two. So, so let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. One more time. Are you ready, sir? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> it's no, Tony. It's no. You better say no. You fold it under questioning, which is which is interesting because you you know. You looked like you had a role in The Sopranos, and I, and I would think that you would be good at this. But that's okay. We'll do it one more time, sir, because I'm in no hurry. Are you done, sir? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'd ask what you all think, but I do have other things to do this evening. And I was watching Katie. And on one of those numbers, Katie did this while she went. And that was on the number six. What do you want, sir? Yeah, that would be the number six. I want to thank you for adding so much fun to everyone's evening here. God bless you, my friend. What a great guy. Come on, give him a round of applause.
You know, I thought it'd be kind of fun tonight to uh, turn the tables a little bit. This is what I mean. Wouldn't it be uh, kind of neat if I were to stand here, think of something, you were to focus on me, and be able to pick up my thought, in other words, read my mind. Let's try it. I'm going to start by sending you the thought of a number. It's going to be a two-digit number. This number will not be higher than 50. Both digits will be odd, and both digits will be different. Please don't say anything out loud. Formulate that number. Because I was warming up with the number 37. Did anybody go that way? Yes, yes, that's good. And I love the look on a couple of the faces of the people who didn't get it, looking at me like it's my fault. <laughs> Let's try it again. Now you know what to do. There are no surprises. Simply focus on me, and I'm going to guarantee at least twice the results. Another two-digit number, this time higher than 50. Both digits even in both Digits different. Formulated. Good. Because that time, I was going for 68. How'd we do? Oh. Nice. Nice. I've got to find something out here. Uh, sir, how many of those numbers did you get, gentlemen, in the end? Excellent. I'm going to ask you to stand up. You don't have to come on the stage. Just stand up right where you are. Give them a nice round of applause. Good for you. See, huh, this nice lady here who's looking everywhere but at me right now. Hi. How many of those numbers did you get? Oh, stand on up. This will be great. Give her lots of love, too. I love the class. Looks good. And your first name? Hi, Harriet. Uh, do you know this gentleman here? Oh, any objection to the three of us triangulating for a moment? None. Okay, very good, very good. Um, well, I do believe in luck, my friends, and I feel good about these people. So good, in fact, I wrote my lucky number down right over here. I'm going to ask both of you to just sort of stare at the little gold seal in the back for a second. Same thing, sir. Take a nice deep breath, and I'd like both of you to formulate a two-digit number, because I feel that one of you might actually pick up my lucky number. Do you have a number, Harry? Okay, well, later that same day. Okay, uh, do you have one now? Excellent. Do you have one, sir? Excellent. Harry, what's your number? Okay. Um, and yours, sir? 1984. 19, if you sit down, you'll get a lovely round of applause, I promise. <laughs> Harry, yeah. come to me, child. <laughs> oh, you move as fast as you think. Um, <laughs> welcome. Nice to meet you. This is everybody. This is Harriet. Say hi. See, they're nice people. Harriet, I'd love for you to just take this and read off my lucky number. 82. Yes! <laughs> 82. I'm sensing some weirdness in the room. <laughs> Harriet, would you please be so kind as to open the envelope? Uh, there's a message in there just for you. Yeah. Read it to yourself. <laughs> I know. It's pretty good. Huh? No, it's actually better than pretty good. It's outstanding. You know, it's a wild thing. It's like, what? Because <laughs> you, you know, you're all going to you know, look at that guy, and he's like, yeah. And then there's you, right? Yeah, I know. It's cool. Before we tag her here and send her out of the wild, let's study her face, much the way we would on reality television. Notice upon reading the card, everything sort of changed. 
her posture changed, her, her smile grew bigger, your eyes lit up, and your nostrils flared. That's a look we call freaked out, and I live for that. <laughs> I'll read this off of it. Deviate just stop me. It says, the woman, not user, will be the closest. She will be off by two. Whoa. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. You know more than I can hand that back to me or take it with you. Because here we are on New Year's Eve where there's always such a fine line between souvenirs and trash. So, tonight I suggest you take it with you, place it under your pillow, within three days something marvelous will happen. I promise. Let's give a wonderful lady, a wonderful round of applause. Thank you, Mary, for this work. I'll walk down so you can all touch me. <laughs> you know, a big part of my work is uh, Visualization. I love the concept of visualization because I think if we can visualize something, we can bring it into our lives. It all begins with this one visualization. And you have an outstanding imagination. Don't you? Your friends all say yes. <laughs> and your name? I'm Marianne. I'm John. I'm going to ask you to stand up for just a moment, please. You can stay right where you are. What are you going to kill her for? You're going to kill someone because I am talking to you. That is a, that just makes my heart feel so good. Um, you have a great imagination too, I can tell. I'm going to ask you to stand up and play too. No, you? Yeah. Oh, I know you did. That's why we're talking to you. You can stand right over there the way this happy lady is. Yeah. I'd like for both of you to be so kind as to lend me the use of your imaginations. This is what I mean. I'd like you both to imagine yourself sitting in a room, a, uh, a white room, comfortable chair. Four walls are white, and all of a sudden one of those walls begins to light up, turning into like the greatest big screen television experience you've ever had in your life with incredible resolution. Uh, can you see this in your mind's eye now? Yes? And you can as well. I'm going to ask you both to close your eyes because as I count backwards from five to one, the image is going to increase fivefold. Five, four, three, two, one. Please open your eyes and let that vivid, vivid color stand out in your mind. Because in your mind right now, my friend, I'm going to ask you to please Picture any person in the world. But let's make it interesting. Let's make it someone everybody would know. Fair enough. Um, and it can be living or dead. That increases the odds. Hmm. And you have someone pictured right now? Perfect. Private thoughts, I like to keep just that way. So I have a small uh, half index card here. And I'll tell you something about you right now. You do not like writing in the lines, do you? Writing in the lines. Oh, no, you go. You're like me. You go hog wild. I can tell the whole thing. So just print that person's name big and bold. And then fold this into quarters when we're done. Make sure that we can't see through it in any way, shape, or form. Got it? Good. You, my imaginative friend, I'd like you to picture on that uh, wall a globe. Beautiful spinning globe. Kind of, remember those Universal movies where they see the globe spinning in the beginning? <clears throat> Focus in on any place in the world. Any place at all. It doesn't have to be just a country. It doesn't have to be a city. It could be a landmark. Anything you want. World's your oyster. Okay? Good. Same thing. I have a feeling when I see a little bit of style going on here that you are not a keeper in the lines either. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, big and bold, just print that on there and please fold it into a quarter so when you're done. I'll take that off where you like. Now this is also a potential test in synchronicity. And what I mean is this. Uh, I have people oftentimes think of Paris and then Napoleon, Julius Caesar, Rome. The wildest one happened to me about 25 years ago. I was in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, the, 
it became personal because the uh, first person actually thought of my grand, my, my godfather. My godfather was a very a, a good pal of my grandfather's and my dad, obviously. Um, and I think everyone in this room uh, would have a good idea of knowing who he was. Um, my godfather was Ted Williams. And uh, not only did the other person say, like San Diego, where Ted was born, or you know Boston, where he played, but the other person, not, not connected, actually wrote down Fenway Park. It was the weirdest thing. It kept me up. I just couldn't. I couldn't fathom it. Now the energy I feel from these two women tonight, I sense the chance of that happening as being nil. <laughs> So we'll just play with whatever we got. I'll take the I'll take the pens. Now that's kind of folded into eighths. You exaggerated there. Um, could you just fold your what the hell <laughs> quarters? Could you just fold yours a couple times because <laughs> fold it into quarters. I get stop. <laughs> just fold it into quarters. Perfect. Right. Good. Now yours is folded into quarters, but I'm going to ask you to fold it another couple times. So it'll be identical to uh, hers. I don't want to be able to uh, look at one and just naturally be able to uh, tell it apart from the others. That's all. I'm not. That's all. Um, I'll take the pen, and, uh, and now you can unfold it back into quarters. Ah, bravissimo. What's that? <laughs> not really. It's probably with my instructions. I'm going to ask you, please, just to hand her your slip. Take both behind your back and mix them up. Give them a thorough mix back over there. Yeah, that's what we want. So you don't know which one is which. Fair enough? I love it. In a moment, I'll snap my finger. I want you to place one on my hand. The one you place on my hand will destroy it. Oh, you like that part, I like it. Place it on my hand, one, two, three, go right ahead. Excellent, as a matter of fact, we're not just going to destroy it, we're going to burn it. And I did speak to the fire guy. I have special dispensation. And as we burn, we can't really see if we're burning name, right? We can't really see what we're burning, name, place. All we can really see is that we're about to burn my fingers. So we will take care of this situation now. Could you please hold your hand up that contains uh, nothing? Place it against mine. Focus on this place. The place, uh, now I'm getting something from you. I'm uh, does the color white mean anything? To you, I'm almost getting like like building like pillars or columns or something. Does this make any sense to you whatsoever? You can say no, it's fine. Uh, to a lesser extent, blue. Does that have anything to do with you? Colors? Uh, the, oh, oh, with you, the, it makes sense. Okay. This, this is wild. Are, are you busy? Because I'm, 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 I want your help. You're going to be like the judge of this whole thing. Because I'm going to write something down. I'm going to hand it to you. You're going to be in charge. Freaking me out. It does, I bet. Glasses out. I like the fact that I like the fact that you're prepared. <laughs> May I please uh, have the other card? Yes. And uh, without my glasses, Michelle Obama. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. Quite a lady. Could you stand up for us, please? Read that card to yourself, and then just turn around and tell them all what it says.
gas car? Yes. Thank you. Wow. Wow, you made my head hurt. You're cool. Hey, you were really good at this. Have you ever been tested? Don't you want to know for what? I mean, for your own, like, intuitive ability. Have you ever? Maybe. Oh, now I'm intrigued. You better stand up then. Yeah, you can leave all your gear there. And, and I'm gonna ask you to stand right over here, right, right down there, because I'm gonna introduce an old family friend. Tonight, of course, I'll be, I'll be working with the crystal as thoughts and energies fly through the air. Uh-oh, I'm sensing there are some guys in the room going, what the heck is he talking about? I'll explain. We all know people. We all know people who when they walk into the room, wow, the room lights up. It feels great to be around these people. They make us feel good. And that's the way we like to feel good. Conversely, there are other people <laughs> who walk into a room and suck all the life right out of it. I hope you're enjoying the show, sir. <laughs> and, and other times there are certain, there are certain, ooh, wow, I pick up certain things. There's, there's a gentleman who's seen two women. Ooh. And he has a question. Apparently he wants to get married. And his question is this, who will be the lucky one? Sir, I will not identify you for your own safety. <laughs> but I will answer the question. You're going to marry Susan. Karen will be the lucky one. <laughs> Every time. My friends in Madagascar, I love that. We'll begin the testing now. Your, your first name? Sonia. Sonia. Please look at your people. They're wonderful. <laughs> I'll narrate the scene. The fabulous Sonia will now look over her left shoulder. She spies the crystal. It fascinates her. You can tell by the look on her face. <laughs> sort of. She slowly approaches the crystal. From the rear. <laughs> There's a much easier way to get there, but uh, that's okay, by any means necessary. She now reaches towards the crystal, but stops, because she sees before her a plethora of color, five different colored placards. She marvels at them. You can tell by the look on her face. <laughs> Realizing that most people in the hall can't see it, she picks one up to display. To display, yes. She then realizes that things are really dragging, so she picks up the pace by speeding up the process, showing the others as well. Yes, now we're talking. Oh, yes, okay, very good. And one, oh, yeah, and one more, yes, until the audience is, uh, is whipped into game show like frenzy, just watching her and her spinning and doing and fabulous. Now please deal them out in the condition you found them. And please make sure they're straight because I have a little mental condition of my own. You see, I'm, thank you for laughing at that, by the way. I'm ADD, but I'm also OCD, which means I want to wash my hands 30 times a day, but I lose interest after the third time. <laughs> so, Everything looks fabulous. So in just a moment, I'm going to have you wave your hand over these, okay? In just a moment, we would wave in your hand. When one of the colors just appeals to you, I'm going to ask you to become one with it by simply placing your hand firmly upon it as you stare intently into the crystal, communicating that to me. All right. Wanna, oh, practice the process once, quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At ease. 
This then deals with abstract thought. If it works, it's going to be crazy. You know, I was reading Psychology Today yesterday, and it said that, no, it was, and it said that two thirds of all Americans are incapable of abstract thought. Can you imagine? Well, I guess most of you can't, but the point is this. There is no real point. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, so much to work with. Yeah. So many people now avoiding my gaze. <laughs> Thinking like, if they can't see me, I can't see them. This just in, I can see all of you. And I would love, oh yes, you please come to me, child. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come, come, come. You can give her some applause. What's your first name? Caroline. You're going to play a very challenging role in this before you do the process. Uh, you're going to play the role of the human blindfold. Okay? So you take the fleshy bits of the hands, right? And just stick them into the eye sockets. <coughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> Caroline, I meant on me. <laughs> See, if you didn't see what was going down, eh, kind of interesting, kind of interesting. But if I don't see, whoa, it's freakishly weird. Okay. So, let's, uh, you stand right over here and uh, assume the position. No, with your hands on my, yes. Okay, breathing is a little hobby, just ease up. Thank you. Begin the process, please. But she's, she's not staring enough into the crystal. She's just staring. Okay, good. Ooh, because I am picking something up, light and bright. I'm picking up the color yellow. How'd we do? Yeah? Oh, my God. Standing. I'm excited. Now I'm going to show you something crazy. I told my father about this years ago. I was going to try this part. He said to me, Johnny, you're an idiot. I said, but Dad, I think I can do this. And he said, do you think you can do this every night? And I said, no. But the nights when it works, it's going to be so cool. And he called me an idiot. <laughs> so every time I do this, I feel my father is somewhere looking down at all of us. <laughs> oh, he's not dead. <laughs> just incredibly condescending. Now, um, if you'll just turn those all upside down, Okay, and then mix them up. Mix them up till you do not know which one is where. Be honest with me. And is John still upstairs? Because he was running from me before. Did, did he leave? No, I'm here. Okay. I just remember there was a mention of you working with me. You immediately ran up to the balcony. I ran. It's okay. Just remember, that's how Lincoln got it. <laughs> anyway, um, all mixed up? Okay. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to take a walk in the wild side of her mind. Try to detangle what's been tangled. And then I ask the question, do you think I could get you to do something you wouldn't necessarily want to do? Pretty much. Um, but let's see if it all comes together. It'll be fun. Assume the position. <laughs> Begin the process. Okay. I was trying to bring you to a place that I think would really sort of suit you. A regal color. Royal color. I was doing my darndest to bring you to the color purple. How did we do? Hmm. Yeah! Let's give both of these wonderful ladies a wonderful round of your applause.
thank you so much. Psychic Sonia. Oh! Wow. I just simply ask this, please, use your powers for good. Okay, good, good, good. You know, if I ever get any of these right, answer out loud, because that's, you know, otherwise I'm the only one that hears you. <laughs> now, my friend, nice to meet you. I'm John. Hi, Kim. I'm going to go through this book. As I do, you can adjust me if you need to. Arms in, arms out, do whatever you need to do to see. Can you see the top line on each page? Can you see how they're all different? It makes it a good book. <laughs> Otherwise, Spella gets bored after a few hundred pages, you know, so... I'm gonna, you do, I will say this though, she does look like a party waiting to happen. <laughs> so I will go through said book and uh, just say the word now like the party is ready to spill all over the floor. <laughs> now, can you see the first word in the page? Lock it into your mind. Are you waiting for a kidney, dear? Because otherwise I couldn't think of why you'd be texting right now. Put that thing away and stand up. You were looking up her birthday, okay, as opposed to hers. Okay, good. All right. You also, boy, you're, your party is percolating. I can feel it. So can you see the lines as I go through here? Oh, yes, and can you, can you make them out? <laughs> Well, the glasses help? I'm glad I'm here. Boy, excuse me, I'm not, I may have to mosh. Here we go. Um, as I go through, just say that word now. Right there, can you see the first word in the page? Excellent. Hi, hi, come on over. You can see that far? Okay. <laughs> wow. Just say now. Got it? Please open that book to any page you like. Uh, you're right handed. Hold it steady in your left hand, please. Look at, tilt yourself towards me a little bit. Raise your right hand, if you will. Close your fingers and put it on that right hand page. Okay. This is going to be about the most difficult thing I've all done so far. Slowly move your hand down that page. Down, down, down. A little more, a little further. Keep going, keep going, keep going. A little more, a little more, a little more. Uh, now, your, your, your middle finger, the one you drive with. <laughs> Back, we're in Massachusetts, okay? I mean, I don't say that in any other state in the Union. We're all so friendly. <laughs> Use your index finger, they're kids. Um, if you could circle, start to circle uh, in that spot. Lower it a little more, widen it. I want a portal with a lot of stuff in there, things that you can see. So, do it slowly. Lower, lower, wider, lower. Now please look at me. Look at the circle. Look at me. Look at the circle. Good. I think I got something. Look at the circle, please. Actually, beneath it. Lower, 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 lower. Because I'm seeing something like through your finger almost. Is there a man's name? Right? Yes, yes, there is a man's name that you're right directly on right now. Good, good, good. You communicate this stuff beautifully. And please, don't give me attitude. You're one of my own. Um, <laughs> It's the inviting body language. It freaks me out. You know, I need all the help I can get. Focus on the first letter of that word. That first letter begins with a with a B. Oh no 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 no! Ooh, she's good. You're really good. It begins with an R, yeah. 
Yeah, the second letter's, oh, the third letter's a B, but that's not what you were doing, and I'm gonna tell them all in a second. Um, it's E-R-T, it's Robert, right? Keep your finger right on that man's name, because it's Robert, and as soon as you saw Robert, you were thinking of Bob, more specifically Bobby, and that's where I was getting the B, and if you think that my job is easy, take a look at how I have to work tonight. I love it, I love it, I love it. Look at the next line underneath there. Choose any word, six letters or more. Don't say it out loud, just lock it in your mind. You have one, please close the book. And, and you have your word remembered over there, then, close, then take the finger out, I don't want any clues. And uh, please take the book and put them both on the, uh, on the table over there somewhere. This is fantastic. Let's play this game. Uh, could you please count the letters in your word to yourself? Did you count more than once? Yeah. <laughs> Because you were off the first time? Because I got two different numbers in succession. Oh, 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 the first number you, time you counted, you counted 10. And then the second time you started counting, you stopped on the ninth one because you knew you were on, on the 10 layers. Okay, fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just want to know, I just want to know where I have to be. I just want to know where I have to be. Because someone else was counting her letters too. I love it all of a sudden. Yeah. 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 Because it's coming through loud and clear. Because um, you were counting, but all of. <laughs> I love this. Because I was getting this. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. As, as you were doing your thing. And I'm getting like, what's that? That was you. <laughs> Repeating your word to yourself over and over again to make sure you wouldn't forget it. Yeah. And the word was afraid, is that correct? Aren't you <laughs> wonderful? Have a seat. You did a fabulous job. Were you thinking of a body part? Here. Please think of the word in the book. Um, I see your word begins with an S, yeah? Alright, I got a very hard time. And the second letter of your word, because uh, yours begins with an S also, right? Oh, you can tell me what's the first letter, just let me the first letter. Of your word. Because <coughs> the second letter of your word is an H, yeah? <coughs> Difficult time over here. Because the second letter of your word was an H, too, right? It's pretty sure. And the third letter is an O, yeah? And what's the third letter in yours is a, yeah. What's coming to me is the word shoulders for you. Yes? And the word should for you. July 7th? Yeah. <laughs> and I like this lady here, because remember when I was teasing you, sir, about people who suck the life out of the room? Uh, as far as you know, I was just joking. And um, <laughs> people, I, you know, I talk about people like that, and you know, it's fun, because most of you, now, because most of you were thinking of somebody. They do, everybody thinks of somebody. But very few people think of somebody positive. Most of you are thinking of somebody negative in that column, weren't you? But there was a lady over there who was thinking, she said, Rich, she was thinking of someone positive. I know you were. And you were too. You had a positive image of someone in your head too, right? Yeah. 
And you think visually. I love the fact that you think visually. Because right now you're kind of got like a scantily clad man in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some women there too. Yeah, there's some women there too. Cool, it's fun, you know, it's okay. And, you're, and, I'm, and I'm hearing sounds like... <clears throat> Wow, you, you, the way you think is incredible. God, my God. And this friend that you're thinking of, um, you met them about, about 15 years ago? About 15 years ago, you met them? Um, less. Um, uh, 11 years ago, right? And it's interesting that you would meet them in Dedham because lots of people who don't... <laughs> Lots of people who don't, you know, know this area go, need them, dead them, need them, dead I mean, how different can they be? But they get them confused. I don't understand that. But it's just why people are like. But there was, oh, there was a, there's a dog in there somewhere. That both of you knew or something? Yeah? Huh, oh, interesting. I'll listen to this guy. What's the dog's name? <laughs> You tell me. Uh, Rosie. <laughs> well, the next time... Oh, I know why you had all those images and those sounds. Because of your word. All those words in that book, you went to one word, and the word she was... I, I, it's coming to me now. Weightlifter? Yes. Give her a tremendous round of applause. Thank you for coming up. You did a great job. You did great. I must say, the next time you speak to <laughs> Tell her that John Stetson was in your head and you liked it. <laughs> and you had a word in mind. What was your word? Sure. Sir, that's one treasure hunt you're going on solo. You just slip that out of there. I'm going to ask you to open that up and just read it, uh, read it out loud. What does it say? Yes! Yes. Up sensing a communications problem. 191L7B. Hey, dictionary guy, stand up, please. Please open the dictionary to page 191. Look at the left hand column, seventh word from the bottom. Read it to yourself first. Look at me when you have it. And out loud, tell us what is it? Lover me. Close enough. <laughs> I think you can read it. You're reading the definition over there. If you count actually up seven, you're going to... Yeah. Thank you so much. Give it all a tremendous round of your applause. You know, there are a few things, my, my, my dear friends. First of all, uh, oh, there's, there's someone who's been living in conflict, and that's you. I know. I'm getting right out of here right now. It's going to take me one second. Or two. This young lady here. You've been thinking of something all night, haven't you? Stand up. We're going to take this. takes just but a minute. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I want to thank you for supporting First Night and uh, staying in your community. Because, you know, uh, where you are is where it's at. And that's where good things happen. Uh, though I do so much traveling in, uh, in, in my business, in my world, in my life, 
One of the trips I'm going to be taking as soon as I'm going to be going back to Afghanistan uh, to work with the young men and women and dogs over there. And uh, one of the ways we support that program and the Wounded Warrior Project is by selling a thumb drive. I don't know if you're familiar with Wounded Warrior, it's our big charity. The thumb drive has some cool stuff on it. It has an ebook called How to Spot a Liar. That came in handy, sir, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> How to Spot a Liar, Invest in Your Intuition. It has a movie, The Personal Intuitive Trainer, has show footage on there. It has a gang of uh, stuff, and it also has what I'm about to show you on there, that you can do this yourself with your friends. It has a guided meditation. It goes on and on. Love to meet you after the show. We have those available. 100% of the proceeds go to sponsoring my military trip and Wounded Warrior Project. But this nice young lady here has been thinking of something, haven't you, my friend? You've had a number locked in your mind. A number locked in your mind all night. And I know this quite, quite simply. I know someone said the uh, kind of laughable thing about me actually using people, <laughs> traveling with people and uh, asking them to say things to answer my questions correctly or whatnot. Certainly not the truth. Um, but in your case, I'm gonna tell everybody what happened. I simply asked you when you came in to think of a number and to lock it in your mind, yeah? And it's there and I don't believe you've told anybody, have you? Good. And here we go. I'll be right up here after the show to say hi to any of you. And if you want to learn to do this, let's see if it works first. 16 squares, 16 boxes, 16 numbers. Do you see your number in any one of these boxes? No. Some people are thinking this is not a good moment. <laughs> but in order for me to know what the young lady thinks of the paradigm, I know what she doesn't think. She's not thinking of any of this. What number were you thinking of? What was that? Oh, 55. There it is. <laughs> but I spoke about paying attention, I spoke about living in the moment, and I spoke about seeing things directly in front of you, a blinding glimpse of the obvious, as 35 to 11 could be 46, was 5 to 51 plus 4, hey, that's 55, the number you were thinking, which is kind of cool, if you think about it, quite frankly, I do, 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 plus 8 is 18, and 2 plus 8 is 18, 55, say, 2 plus 8 could be 46, 46 plus 8 is 9, 9 plus 8 is 55, wonder what the last one is, I don't know, 7 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 Cool part is that 35 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 9 plus 2 plus 5 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 How about any four boxes connecting anywhere on here? Well, why every box over there gives you another one, another 55, another 55? How about the ones in the middle of your window? 82, 82, 82, 84, 84, 55. And just for you, the four corners for all time, say 35, plus 7 is 42, plus 9 plus 9 is 55. And not only that, come quick, 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 quick. Because these, my friends, are next week's Massachusetts State Lottery numbers. <laughs> you take them, and you rock. I love being here. Thank you so much. God bless you. I wish you a very, very happy new year. Thank you so very much for making me so very happy. What a town, what a night. God bless you all. Thank you very much, John. What a pleasure. What a treat, what a performance. I feel like I'm in Vegas watching, watching one of those shows where we're in a meeting. Thanks, John.